Hey guys, welcome back for another video. So what's the best way that we can connect our processor or our AVR to our home subwoofers? That's what this video is gonna talk about. Now the good news is I'm gonna bet that most people are already doing it right, or at least the best they can for their particular situation. So this is probably gonna serve as confirmation. But maybe for some of you, you're gonna be able to switch which way you're connecting or make a change in your equipment for some better sound quality. So first of all, this is about the low level signals going from your processor to the amp or the subwoofer if the amp is built into it. This is not specifically about speak on connectors, which you're gonna see between the amplifier and a passive subwoofer. That's very common in DIY kits. You'll see speak on connectors used because they handle a ton of power. They're very inexpensive. They're locking. They're generally used for professional applications. So that's not what this is about. What you're typically going to see is either a combination or one or two, sometimes all, depending on your sub of these three types. You're going to see speaker wire connectors. You're going to see RCA and you're going to see XLR. So in order of sound quality, they go from least to best speaker wire, but not for the reasons you might think RCA and XLR. XLR is a special cable and it differs in RCA in one critical way. Think of it this way. This is a two conductor wire. You have a positive and a negative. XLR is a three conductor wire. You have a negative and two positives. The entire reason XLR exists is to combat and eliminate noise. When you run a wire, especially a bare wire like this very inexpensive speaker wire, this over a long run, especially if you're going near other things like power wires, especially if they're parallel, act as antennas, literal antennas. This is just like the rabbit ears on an old TV or an old basic antenna for a Walkman or an old stereo that used string wire antennas. It picks up signals out of the air. There's no shielding. There's just some PVC jacketing here. In this case, it's mostly clear and you're right down to the copper core wire. And over a long enough run, this thing just picks up whatever's in the air. In our homes these days, I mean, that can be anything that uses Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, smart home devices, your microwave, tons of stuff send things through the air. Cell phones, cordless phones, back in the day, the first generation of cordless phones, I'm gonna date myself, were very interruptive. But if you use this to go between your low level source, like your processor or your AVR and an amplifier, that amplifier not only picks up the signal, it picks up the noise and it might manifest itself as static or pops. Most often though, it's hum. And in a subwoofer, especially you hear it because if you're picking up power wire noise, if it's going through a wall or if it's along a baseboard or if it's a external cable going to other devices and it's laying across it on the floor, you're gonna hear right around 60 Hertz, a constant hum that you're never gonna get rid of. And that's picking up the hum from that 60 Hertz, at least here in the United States, power wire hum. So how do we get rid of it? Well, with speaker wire, it's all about physical movement. You just have to get things far away, get the run as short as possible, make sure you don't have extra wire that's looping. There's not a whole lot you can do. Now, let me just talk briefly about the pros of using speaker connector wires, uh, speaker wire connections on your subwoofer. And you're gonna see these on basically the bargain basement subs, the entry level stuff, nothing high end, nothing substantial. Um, there's just no way to, put it. It's made for entry level stuff because it works with very entry level other type of equipment. If you have just a two channel stereo system, you don't have a sub out, you don't have surround sound, you don't have an LFE channel, you have no dedicated way to connect a subwoofer. You can do it through the speaker connections in the subwoofer. And what you'll see, 
like this diagram here is a set of speaker in and speaker out connections. And you literally plug the same wires that you had going to your speakers into your sub, it goes in there first, it will take out what it needs and amplify that part of the signal, and then pass the rest right back through to your speakers. Doesn't do anything bad to the signal, there's nothing wrong with that. The reason I say it's the worst type of connection though is because of the physical connections. Typically they are these absolute junk spring type terminals. At best, they're gonna be some cheap plastic binding post terminals. They're gonna be using very substandard metals inside, very small gauge wires inside going to its board. So you're gonna introduce that into your signal path. Now the good news is anybody using these doesn't have the kind of equipment where they really care. They're not gonna hear a difference. So if that's all you have and that's what you need to use, feel free to use it. It's going to work just fine and you're probably not gonna hear any detriment to the signal. But if you have a good system with dedicated sub out signals, you're definitely gonna to wanna to use that. And that's where we get into the better options and the far most common RCA. You're gonna see these in either single or dual inputs on the back of your sub. Now, sometimes they'll just say left and right. Sometimes one may be labeled mono, some may be labeled LFE. Sometimes it doesn't matter which one you input into, it operates exactly the same. You have to check your manual. Unfortunately, there's no standard for this. And some are what are called summing, S-U-M. That means if you plug one in, you're getting less of a signal than if you plug in both of them. And you can use these Y connections here to simply split the one and plug both physically into the sub. Does it make much of a difference? Well, we're gonna find out because I'm gonna do a test for you and I'm gonna show you exactly what it does. Now, contrary to what you might think, this isn't for sound quality. This is mainly to help with signal level. And for most people, that doesn't even matter because you're gonna be somewhere in the middle of your gain range anyway on the sub. But if you are, for example, at your extreme, your gain is all the way up on your sub, which typically you don't want to do. But if you are and you just need more, you, you know that there's some more there, that's where this comes in really handy because just for some at least, plugging this in, and using both terminals on your sub increases the input signal, the voltage. And then you can get more range. You can turn that gain down on your sub or leave it up and get more volume. But the biggest difference it makes is for those people that have subs that aren't coming on automatically all the time, if you look on the back of your power switch, you typically have on, auto, and off. Some of the really inexpensive subs, you're just gonna have on or off. Some of the really, really inexpensive ones, you don't even have a switch. If it's plugged in, it's on. But any good sub has on, auto, and off. Now me, I leave them on because I've measured this. I've showed this in past videos. They are pulling literal cents of power a year. Just left on, as long as they're not playing anything, they just sit there. They're not doing anything. They're not drawing your power bill. They're not using electricity. So I just leave them on. I don't care. It doesn't do anything. There's no downside to doing that. Now, if they were using, you know, a buck or two a day of electricity, of course I would use on, <laughs> but they don't. But if for whatever reason you like to use the auto, which is auto sensing, it's looking for a signal coming through the chain. And when it senses it, it turns it on. So it's really a standby mode. Think of it that way. Most TVs these days, they're never off unless they're unplugged from the wall. They're always in standby because they have to receive a signal from the remote or your network, right? So that's the way the sub works in auto. It's in standby mode, which guess what? Is the same as on when it's not playing. You see my point? But anyway, when it senses a signal, it comes on to full on and starts playing. Now the problem is where that detection level is, is not adjustable. So it's looking for a certain threshold of voltage coming through and that varies depending on the sub. And of course varies depending on what your 
giving it, what cable you're connecting it with, you know, that, that level is not set. So some people have a delay. They'll be playing music and it might be a, you know, a second or two before the subs kick on. That can be very jarring. I hate it myself. When you start a song and there's no bass and then a couple seconds into it, all of a sudden your subs kick on, that's terrible. It's just, I don't like it. So if you want to fix that and you don't want to just leave it on, on, this is where you can use one of these because increasing that voltage also increases that voltage to the auto on circuit. So it virtually, in most cases at least, eliminates that problem. Mono price subwoofers are notorious for having a very high voltage threshold. So just doing this can completely solve that problem for you, for those of you that like to use the auto circuit. Now the other wired way is XLR, specifically balanced XLR. If you look on these, they have three prongs and they differ from RCA in that main way. RCA has a negative and a, and a positive, and like I said, they pick up noise like an antenna. Well, these pick up noise exactly the same way. The difference is two of these are carrying a positive signal, one of which is inverted in polarity, meaning the waveforms, one goes up first, comes down, up, down. The other is the opposite, going down first. So what you get is if you combine those two, nothing. They cancel each other out. Now, you might think that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You get no signal at the other end. Well, that would be true if that's all you did. But here's the trick. The noise is entering the cable. The noise is entering both flipped signals at the same time. So what happens at the other end, in the receiver end, at the amplifier or the subwoofer you're connecting to, it flips one of them. So all of a sudden, your signals are now both in polarity, same polarity, so you get signal out of that, but the noise is now flipped. And if you combine it at that point, the noise is canceled out, and all you're left with is your original signal. These are excellent for rejecting virtually all kinds of noise and using for very long runs. So that's why this is your best cable option for absolutely guaranteeing as much as possible, no noise coming through. And these are also used as interconnects in much shorter links, of course, between your processor and your amplifiers for your main channels for the exact same reason, cutting noise. And of course, you get the best possible signal. Now there are special RCA cables out there called sub cables. And basically, they're just adding shielding to the physical cable. This is as basic as it gets. This is just a short run here. You would not run anything this small as a subwoofer cable unless it was right next to your processor for some reason. But you can see it's very thin. You have some very thin gauge wire inside, a little bit of cotton sheathing, and your PVC, and that's it. So what happens to reject noise is they will add on layers. Underneath, they'll make it thicker. They'll use bigger gauge wire, and they'll put a coating, a metal shield, underneath the PVC, and that will help, just like putting tin foil on your head to block out the alien signals, that'll help noise from getting into the cable. Definitely not as effective as an XLR, and the longer runs you go, the more you're going to get in. So if you just have a short run, and you can't or don't want to use XLR, using an actual sub RCA cable can definitely be a good choice, and that's actually what I run in my particular case, just because I don't have the option with the equipment I do of using XLR. And it happens to work fine. I'm running a 25 foot up and over a fireplace around a couple little corners and I have no noise coming in through the sub. Also, some subs, the amplifiers in subs specifically, have noise filtering circuits. So if you're hearing a little bit of noise in a cheap sub, you may not hear it in a better sub using the exact same cable and equipment. Now lastly is the wireless option. I particularly only suggest that you try or use one of the two SVS wireless kit options. They range between 100 and 200 depending on the kit you use. Their latest one is a tri-band. I have both of them here. I use both of them here. They both work flawlessly as far as the signal and the frequency response and all that. The only downside to using wireless over 
any wired solution is a delay in the signal. And depending on, again, all of your equipment and your setup, that may or may not become an issue for you. It's definitely able to be compensated for in most cases. For example, just going into the AVR, and if you're using it on a dedicated sub out channel with its own delay slash phase slash distance, which is what most AVRs call it, you can simply bump it up by usually about 30 feet or so. That's the delay on these. I can't remember how many milliseconds that translates to, but it's 30 extra feet of distance and that compensates for the delay in the SVS wireless kits. Other wireless kits, I have tried them. Trust me, don't, don't bother. There are pops or clicks or dropouts. There are connection issues. There are failure to boot issues. The SVS have been the only ones that I have any experience with, and I've tried, I think, five of them out there that work 100% of the time. So just my suggestion there. But let's check out test with REW real quick and see what effect a summing amplifier will have going from one RCA to two. So now we're going to take our baseline test. I just have this one sub on, everything else is disconnected or shut off. And this is how I have it connected just with the single LFE connection via RCA. So as you can see here in my results, again, this is just the one single sub, nothing else in the room playing. And now without making any changes, we're going to go ahead and disconnect it and install two RCA connections and rerun the test and see what happens. And then here with both in, as expected, just a rise in volume. And that's simply because the input voltage has been increased. As far as output and sound quality goes, this is exactly the same as just turning up the volume knob or the gain knob on your sub a little bit. Now one interesting thing and something you need to consider, your RCA Y splitter has to be of good quality also, just like your sub cable. Now with just the single cable in, I get no hum out of this sub or amp. However, I am getting hub, a hum right now with this plugged in. That's because these are really cheap. I just pulled these off of Amazon just for this test, just to make this video. And these are not what you would want to run. You would want something nice, thick and shielded. You can see the difference. I mean, this single cable here is thicker than both of these coming out of this Y splitter. So don't gimp your signal chain. Anyway, I hope this helps and helps you make up your mind as to how best to connect your sub and solve any problem you may have. See you guys next time.